This just in, the highly anticipated conference, Business Analysis Summit Southern Africa, will be hosted in Durban. The 12th edition of the conference will see the best minds in business analysis, both locally and internationally, descend on the sunny shores between the 4th and the 6th of November. This is a developing story so keep your eye out for further information. Make sure you don't miss out on the business analysis event of the year. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our tools, tools and techniques this evening. We've got an interesting topic, and Anna Linda will welcome her later. We're going to do working nine to five, of you, as you've heard from the song. So let's just look at a few house rules. Today is going to be slightly different. So switch on your cameras, and you can raise your Zoom hand anytime during the presentation. So we're going to keep it quite interactive. The presentation will be about 45 minutes long. You may post your questions in the main chat. We will read um, them to the presenter when it's time for Q&A, but she will also monitor some of the chats in between. So if you have questions, just raise your hand and ask. It's open. Um, then the presentation will definitely be uploaded into YouTube at a later stage. We unfortunately don't share the deck after this session. Then some useful links. Um, our co-host will share those in the chat for you. If you want to become a member, please send a mail to our analysis membership link. Um, you can also access that on the iiba.org website. There's also our events list. Um, lots of activity happening on the IIBA site. There's a LinkedIn page. Go to that, share, um, Follow those events. You'll see all the updates for another tools and techniques or the summit coming up. And then should you want to be part of the community in any one of the volunteer groups, this one is the tools and techniques. Please send a mail to professional development at South Africa. Right. And then thanks for joining. So let's get into our host. And Linda, main area of passion is bringing humanness into the workplace. So she adores trying new things out. She is a connector of and with people. She's worked as an analyst, facilitator, musician, a scrum master, agile coach across various industries, and is also a published poet. So her favorite communication method includes emojis and gifts. We welcome you, Anna Linda. Floor is yours. Thank you very much. Let me just get the screen share going. There we go. Right. I hope you can see the slide. Amazing. All right. Thanks so much, Kusan. Um, Good evening, everybody. Um, before we really get going, I would really like to invite you to join me on camera during the session. Um, even if you're in your pajamas, we accept you as you are. And I'm also very happy to see your child or your family member or your dog or your cat, uh, you know, go through as we go along. It's really not a disturbance. It's it's life and it's humans, humaning. Um, you're also welcome to be off mute if you're comfortable with that, um, unless you're actually in a construction site. Uh, or, you know, if you're like me and you tend to swear a lot, forgetting that you're not muted, then, you know, um, I would love to interact with all of you as we go along. Um, later on, we're going to use an audience interaction tool called Slido. So please either keep your phone or a browser window handy to participate in that. And towards the end, you're going to need a, a post-it note or some other little small piece of paper and a pen. Um, just some background about the talk. Um, quote from Brene Brown, you may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. What you do and who you are sometimes become tangled into one, and over time, you become your role. The inability to separate yourself from your role can negatively affect your mental and physical well-being. You'll become emotionally spent from putting work at the core of your life. Devastating effects can follow if you become absorbed into your role or organization as a central idea to your identity. 
what happens when this falls away? How much control do we really have over that? Who are we without our work? While it's a good thing to find meaning in your work, it is important to remember that we are not solely defined by what we do or who our employers are. I'm going to tell you how I navigated some um, quite intense career changes um, while keeping connection with my self-worth. Exploring your idea of self can support your ability to remain flexible while navigating life's many challenges. Um, at the end of this, you're going to walk away with just some simple practical ideas of what you could consider looking into or help someone else look into to unlink role and personal identity. Okay. So as you would have heard by now, I'm Anna Linda. Um, I'm well aware that my name is a bit of a tongue twister, so please feel free to call me Al, um, like that old Paul Simon song, for those of us who are old enough to know it. I am a single dog mom. I write poetry, I take photos, and I notice things. I can write upside down and back to front, and I have no idea why. I care deeply about people. I want to create work environments where everyone has the space they need and are comfortable and welcome to be heard, seen, and known just as they are. I grew up in Johannesburg, and even though I live in Cape Town now, I am not vegan and I didn't attend a fancy private school. I happen to work as an agile coach and facilitator at Skynamo. The work I do um, can be best described, well, there are many ways to describe it, but this one feels most suitable at the moment. What I do at work helps humans human and teams team. Oh, and I also supply zoo cookies. If I'd spoken to you just over three years ago, I would have said that I happened to work at IQ Business. Before that, I happened to work at a company which ran away in the night with our salaries and our SARS contributions. So the less I say about them, the better. Prior to that, I happened to work at the mining organization Anglo-American until my role was made redundant. Retrenchment had been hanging over my head for five entire years, my whole time working there. I had found my way to Anglo-American after working in quite a few less formal roles and industries. You could find me on a busking contract at Monte Cassino. You could find me waiting tables at a restaurant that is so old that the logo isn't even available on Google image search. You could find me merchandising music and computer game CDs at Musica. What is that even? You could find me migrating from coffee shop to coffee shop in search of a more humane manager. You could find me working in an insurance call center even as I was pushed right to the edge of madness. So as you can see, these things really do tend to change quite a fair bit. While these things really do tend to stay quite the same. None of the things that keep on changing truly matter because I am more than my job. So given the intro song and the title of this talk, you might have been led to believe that I'm a huge Dolly Parton fan. Well, right now, I would like to hear from you in the Zoom chat. Um, without Googling, what is Dolly Parton known for? What comes to mind? What do you know about Dolly Parton? Please pop it into the chat. Let's have a look. Singing, yes. <laughs> Acting, country music, Dollywood. Aha, uh -huh. I actually forgot about that. Philanthropist. Hmm, what else do we have? Anything else come to mind? Miley Cyrus's godmother. Breast implants, <laughs> wigs, Kenny Rogers. Okay, I, I love all these things. I had no idea about half of them. <laughs> I 
islands in the sea. <laughs> yeah, that's really taking us back down memory lane. Oh, yes, islands in the stream. Thank you. Red lipstick. Yep. Sounds familiar. Jolene, also well covered by Miley. <laughs> yeah, that's probably one of the most known songs, I feel like, on the earth. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we got most of it there. So it does appear that we do have some Dolly Parton fans in the session today. Um, she is known as a highly successful songwriter, a singer across multiple genres with a music performance career spanning more than 60 years and an actress on top of that. What most may not know is that she's also a business executive. She owns an amusement park, which opened in 1986, and she has struck business deals with the likes of Netflix and numerous kitchen supply companies. She's also a generous philanthropist. In honor of her father who couldn't read or write, she founded the Imagination Library, which has gifted more than 250 million books to children across the world. She donated a million dollars to fund research during the pandemic. And she supports her community, providing scholarships, education programs, and money for families in need. And this is really just for fun. The Jolene was added to her range of cast iron skillets in August. Jolene, please don't take my pan. There will be even more depth to Dolly's personality and identity that none of us are privy to. There's much more to Dolly than just her job. Her identity spans far more than what she chooses to do, just like me and just like you. It's an undeniable fact that us humans all want to belong. Maslow's hierarchy of human needs shows that we deeply desire and require a sense of connection. Community, however that may look for you. It's often easier to belong to a company, a job role, or a professional community than a community outside of work. Our devices have also drawn us in, and the human-to-human -human connection we so yearn for creeps further out of reach. Even online, you might find really amazing communities. You will always find someone who shares your interests, no matter how obscure they may seem. It's all about finding somewhere you feel you can truly belong. Belonging is a key human need. Now, to who or what do we choose to belong? Okay, we're going to go to our first um, question using Slido. If you would pop over to the web, I'll pop the link into the chat. And you can use the participant code that I've also popped in there, working nine to five. It's also on the screen. The question is, what are some of the ways or places that you have found community? Anything that comes to mind. Okay, and please let me know if you're struggling to access the tool, we'll make a plan. Culture. Okay, got some more stuff coming in there. Dog owners, left-handed people, art. Where have you found a sense of community? Single moms, ah, lots of answers popping in there now. Social media, role-playing, family. Hmm. K-pop community, ooh, that's an interesting one. Um, Dancing and arts. Ah, I see families coming up there quite strongly. Um, networking groups. 
The choir mom's waiting on Mondays. <laughs> Church. Football pitch. What else is there? Four patrol groups. Oh, gosh, that's cute. Resident groups. Jim. Yes, I was wondering if Jim would pop up there. IRBA. Yes, that's great to hear. Okay. So you might notice that there's quite a range here and um, things might be popping up that you've never considered, you know. So it's it's really cool that everyone has their little place that they feel they can belong. So I popped a couple in there as well. Um, some of my really close friends or people that I've never met in person that I know from the fan run Jamie Cullum forum that was like active in 2008 or something. Um, and yeah, it's just amazing how you can build community when you haven't even met someone in person as well. Okay, great. Thanks for your participation there. That's great. So these days, if you have a device and access to the internet, even the much debated algorithms that some of us may love to hate, um, even those create community around you based on your interests. It's really gotten much easier and the barriers to entry are lower than ever. Back to my career story. So working at Anglo-American was my first experience in a mildly productive environment and working in a large multinational organization. I made so many good friends there. Along with my current day best friend, Calais, I used to decorate everyone in the department's desks for their birthdays. We would arrange farewell functions for people who might move to another regional office, might have resigned or might be retiring. And once these events started, where would you find me? Like clockwork, you would find me crying in the bathroom. I absolutely loved the people I worked with, a little bit too much. I got wrapped up with the humans. I do believe that we need to enjoy the work we do and the people we work with. Otherwise, why bother? I mean, I don't think I would get out of bed. We spend so much time at work. Why would we want to spend it in misery? Working nine to five. What a way to make a living. Barely getting by. It's all taking and no giving. They just use your mind and they never give you credit. It's enough to drive you crazy if you let it. This life described by Dolly Parton <clears throat> excuse me, isn't the only possible reality. We can choose to construct something different. We can choose to install boundaries and hold them dear. We can have healthy lives. We can choose to work towards humane, kind and productive workplaces. My friend Jerry worked his whole life at one of the country's largest banks. And in a few years time, he had looked forward to a solid retirement playing golf with his work friends every Wednesday. Suddenly, Jerry and many others around his age were faced with a role redundancy. Now put yourself in his shoes and imagine for a moment that you have dedicated everything in your life towards this company and then it's all gone. They were absolutely lost and broken. The bank was Jerry's family. That's all he knew. He hadn't attended a job interview in 40 years and had not updated his CV in 40 years. There was never any need for that because Jerry was home. Now what to do? Jerry's entire universe was falling apart around him. He didn't know who he was without the company. He was completely unaware of it, but his identity was completely wrapped up with that of the companies. There was no Jerry without the company. And he had thought there was no company without Jerry. But Jerry is sadly mistaken. Companies will do anything they can to suck you into the culture so that you would stay as long as possible. Step into a sleep pod for a quick nap between your meetings. Gain easy access to all the latest technology. Grab a free coffee and meet your team at the foosball table. We know that hiring is an increasingly expensive process. And at the end of the day in business, money talks. 
when the company decides to take you back to the SPCA, how does your sense of self get affected? Look, it's really not cool. It doesn't matter how nicely it's done. A role being made redundant is never something we look back on with warm and fuzzy feelings. When my role was made redundant, it sucked. I immediately worried about money. We had just bought a home and I wondered whether we'd be able to keep paying the installments. I had financial obligations in my wider family. I also employed someone. Would I be able to keep paying her and for how long? What would the effect of all of this be on her family? Now, take a moment and just sit with this potentially quite troubling thought. Imagine your role is made redundant tomorrow morning. How would you navigate that? How major of an upset would it be in your world and within yourself? Please don't get me wrong. I would be absolutely gutted if Skynemo had to tell me today that things aren't working out. Yet I'm not wrapped up with Skynemo. You will notice, however, that I am very much on board. I will tell people about Skynemo whenever I have a gap. The company name is on my slides and we have a surprising overlap of color schemes. I really love working there. I am not saying that you should not be affected emotionally when something like a role redundancy happens to you. Just that there's a difference between being affected and being shattered into tiny unrecognizable shards of your former self. Belonging can come in many forms and can also be quite unproductive as in Jerry's case. Have a quick look at the chat. Ah, okay, I'll have a look at those later. Right now, we're going to spend just a, a little moment and hear from one of today's greatest philosophers. I feel, like, I feel like a lot of us have become a little too attached to our work, you know? We identify with our work. Have you ever asked somebody just randomly, you'd be like, hey, tell me about yourself. And they'll be like, well, I'm an architect. And tell me about yourself. Well, you know, I own a hair salon. And tell me about yourself. Well, I'm a teacher. And tell me about yourself. And people will tell you about what they do. You know? It's become the thing that people focus on. The French don't do that. No. You literally, you'll never meet a French person who does that. You go up to a French person, you'll be like, excuse me. What do you do? Be like, oh, me, I, uh, I go for walks with my friends and, uh, you know, I like to, uh, you know, uh, eat good food. And uh, you're like, no, no, no. What do, you, what do you do for a living? It's like, ah, for a living, pardon, pardon, okay, for a living, okay. No, I uh, breathe and, uh, you know, I drink water and, uh, you know, of course I have to make love, you know. Uh. Well, if Trevor says it, then... It must be true. Maybe we should all just be French. I would very much like to be someone's much loved and pampered French poodle myself. Here are a couple of signs I've noticed over the years, and it may help you identify whether your sense of self is wrapped up with your role or company. Sleep, eat, work, repeat. Some folks always seem to be busy working and they desperately want to be busy working often to the detriment of relationships at home. People might state, I am an engineer, rather than I work as an engineer. Notice these subtle differences. We sometimes choose to describe ourselves to new people with job information and little or nothing else. We choose to socialize with people from work and not many others. At certain phases in life, this is almost unavoidable, of course, but it does become easier with age and experience to establish a solid social network that doesn't specifically rely on your work structures. You might find that you can't easily identify a creative learning or sporting activity that holds a fair level of your interest and passion outside of work. People might jokingly say to you, yeah, you'll be buried at that place. And it actually makes you feel pleased and content within yourself. If you're hearing yourself being described right now, there might be some alarm bells going off in your head. Wee, wee. Don't panic. You too can shift to working nine to five with a spring in your step and a smile on your face. Here's the second question I have for you. Let's go over to Slido. If you kept it open, it will just refresh the next question. 
What have you come across that might indicate that a person is intertwined with their role or company? What have you come across that might indicate that? Ooh, referring to work as family. Oof, one of my favorite bugbears. What else have we seen? I have no other interests outside work, absolutely. Hmm. Working late as a habit. Oof. Yes. Always checking off his emails. Yep. Unable to delegate exceptions to the norm, putting work as a priority. I'd love to hear more about exceptions to the norm. I'm not sure what you mean there. You're welcome to pop it in the chat or speak uh, out verbally if you like. They feel guilty being ill, taking leave. Teams on, oh, Teams, the application on their phones. Oof, yes, another thing I'm not a fan of. Okay. Oh, defensive of the employer. They have no life or friends outside work. Ah, thank you. No work-life balance. Exception becomes the norm. Okay, got you. Eating lunch at the desk. Ah, terrible. Always on standby. Hmm. I could write a whole book about a couple of these things. <laughs> okay, I see a few people are still typing. I'll just give it a moment. Integrating social life with professional. Yeah, I must say, I don't see that as a problem inherently. I think it's when... You don't have any people that you interact with that aren't also at work. Um, so there's always a nice balance. I think it is quite cool to be able to bring your entire self to work, but I don't think work should be your entire self. Um, cool. I think we've covered all of those. All right, let's move on. Thanks for your participation. Colleagues are friends. <laughs> Involved in office politics. Oh, yes. Yeah, so um, oof, so many here. We could write a whole, um, I think, a series about it. Okay. So I see two ways out of these situations. Choice and lack of choice. You could wait to get pushed off a cliff or you could walk the steps down the mountain on your own terms. You always hold the power. Here are some ways that you might choose. Make sure to use your legally allocated leave days. And when you do, remove your work apps from your devices. Don't use personal apps like WhatsApp for work. My highly unpopular opinion is that serious companies will invest in work apps for work. They will also encourage you to take your leave and truly disconnect. Intentionally find and develop interests outside work. This could be music, art, sport, chess, DIY, gardening, archery, teaching maths to children, anything really. We can find a beautiful, deep sense of community and connection in activities where we learn, create, or volunteer along with others. Take the time to set simple, achievable, well-structured goals that relate to life areas outside work. Start small and keep it simple. Some examples that come to mind are, go to park run every second Saturday. Take a 15 minute walk as a family after dinner every night. Read two pages of that book you've been putting off for a year every night before bed. Start small. Something really, really minuscule and very significant. A, a tip from the improv world that you may have already come across, shifting language from but to and. In the blink of an eye, you're going to notice yourself opening up possibilities around you. This tiny shift is really quite something. 
the seeming desire to edit, comment, criticize, downplay, or limit of the word but contrasted with the way that and builds on, amplifies, supports ideas and thoughts. Take the time to notice what you think and say about and to yourself internally and out loud. We speak our realities into existence. What does your reality look like? What do you want it to look like? Only you have the power and the ability to change that. And now for our third and final question. Pop back to Slido. What other things do you think might help someone shift if they are intertwined with their role or company? Love to hear what you think might help someone shift. Got a couple of things popping up there. Time management, yes, absolutely. Peer support, having a supportive manager. Therapy, excellent plan. Understanding not your monkey, not your circus. Yes, being able to step away from things. You don't have to own everything so tightly. Taking leave, saying no, yes. Hmm, I see some people are still typing. I'll we'll give it another moment. Let me have a quick look at the chat. Okay, I see there's a couple of questions. We'll chat through them later. Don't worry about things you cannot control. Ooh, being a key dependency. Ooh. Um, not settling. Negotiating. Think big, plan small. <laughs> I like that. Okay, prioritizing. Okay, I think we'll move along shortly. Anything else popping up? Okay. Putting yourself first. Ah, best comment I've seen in a while. Thank you. Asking for help. Amazing. Okay, sounds like you guys are well on your way. Okay, so now I'd like you to grab your pen and your piece of paper. We're going to just slow down for a moment. Oh, and you don't, you're not going to share whatever you write down with anyone, so you can just um, spend this moment with yourself. You're going to just slow down and think about yourself, your identity, your life, and your role and your company, and your community. Throughout this, you might be leaning towards that your sense of self is maybe a little bit intertwined with your role or your organization, or that you're not. But either way, we're going to spend a moment here in silence. Write down whatever is running around in your brain right now. Whatever comes to mind, write down. What might you want to shift today as of right now? Write it down. And then you're going to keep that nearby as a reminder of your commitment to yourself. What might you want to shift? Okay, hopefully you had the chance to jot something down. I really encourage you to just keep that nearby, put it on the fridge or somewhere that you, you know, at your desk, um, and just look at it every now and then. Just remind yourself of that commitment to yourself. You are the one who holds the power. You will need to put in the effort required and actively work at unwrapping your sense of self from your role or company. Imagine Dolly might have said, working nine to five, it's one way to make a living. You can touch the sky, fairly taking and some giving. Nurture your heart and mind, 
your interests get an edit. It's enough to make you happy. Go and get it. Now, whether you're young or old or married or divorced or retrenched or unemployed or you work at whichever company, in whichever role, in whichever industry, in whichever time zone, it is your true essence, the core of yourself that brings value out into this world. So always know, believe, and remember that you are so much more than your job. Thank you. I would love to hear if there are any thoughts, questions, comments. We'll have a look at the chat as well. I'm sure there's a couple that we never addressed. Hey. Ah, got some questions. How do you disengage? Okay, I hope that some of those pointers um, helped you there. If I if I read your question and you feel it hasn't been answered, please just speak up. How do you disengage? I feel like I'm emotionally engaged with the company. Yes, been there, done that. Uh, referencing my Anglo-American story, I was just so like in there, you know. Um, you have to just you know, get that awareness is the first step and then just slowly, slowly just make small little shifts, you know, just say, okay, look, I can't do this over the weekend. I'm going to do this first thing on Monday and then when do you need it? Tuesday. Okay, great. Cool. Um, just broaden your life a little bit. Um, what else do we have? Okay, I'm sorry that you were struggling with sound, let's say four. Um, I can... Pop the link to the video in the chat, maybe you can quickly find it. Uh, reality, work is not your family. It's a place where you can feel valued and reach your goals. If you care about it enough and you lose what you value, it feels like a death and you experience grief of the happy emotions it made you feel. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what if you are a people pleaser? Ooh, mm. All these questions really feel like they're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> you you can shift, believe me. It it takes consistent effort, but you can shift. Um, I think there's lots of attributes we we display now that might be a factor of you know maybe the way you were brought up or something else that happened through your throughout your life, and we are not a prisoner to them, despite what we might feel. You can shift. We just need to put in that effort. Um, at least you are not living in the times anymore where you had to have permission from your manager to get married. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad we are living in a time where there is a realization that work is not our lives, but to be fully alive and happy, we need to focus on our expectations for ourselves and our lives, not what other people expect of us. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Oh, Anna Linda, we've got one year yes. in the Q&A. Yes. There's one yes. year that says, how to decipher your current standing? Not sure. I think I'm detaching and want to run away from the company. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay, this is a tough one. I'm not sure I fully okay, understand. Sure. But how to decipher your current standing? So are we asking, how do you know? what state you're currently yeah. in in terms of the intertwining. So I honestly just, you know, you could literally go through that little list and I'll probably end up putting like a, a copy of the slide pack onto LinkedIn or something anyway. But the the list of like, you know, um, do you have a life outside work? Do you have interests that are outside work? Um, you know, do you only have work friends, stuff like that? So just kind of sit and think, you know, and um, see how you feel. I mean, if you even vaguely feel you're intertwined, then I would <laughs> hazard that you are intertwined. So um, I think just, you know, spend that time and just introspect and maybe even speak to some of your peers at work that you trust and just say, look, you know, you've got this feeling. What do they think? And um, yeah, look, there's lots of help out there. Um, people from the industry, therapy, coach that you might be able to access, um, your friends and your family. And yeah, don't make any rash decisions like running away from the company sounds a bit rash. 
but if it feels that you are too deep in, then it's usually a good sign to just start reassessing and see what you really want for yourself. Okay, there's another one. At some companies, it seems like you need to intertwine if you want to have career growth. Yes, absolutely. So again, been there, done that. Um, so for me, it's not simple, but it does feel quite simple. You have to, um, you have to really consider whether you are up for that. You can get career growth elsewhere in a healthy and productive way. So you need to sit and consider again, do I want this for myself or not? And sometimes it's okay. You can suck it up for a year or two if you've decided to do it, right? I think making that conscious decision is really important. Um, yeah. Anything else? You're also welcome to speak verbally if you like. I'm going to stop the screen share shortly. Just wanted to say um, I'm more than happy to connect on LinkedIn. If you maybe have further questions, you are very welcome to send me a message and we can chat further about that. I'm going to just stop the share so I can hopefully see some lovely faces again. Yay. There are people out there. <laughs> no, I Danita, have, have you been abandoned on the side of the road? No oh, chilling. Yeah. Um, no, but, yeah, because I'm done with low chilling. I'm actually traveling in actually back to the hotel. I'm in Botswana. Ah, got you. Oh yes, I forgot you. There. Cool. All right. See. Anyone else have a thought, a question, a comment? I've, I've had. Tell me, I'm um, talking nonsense. I'm question. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I think you're really talking uh, a lot of what you're saying. Um, and I just wanted to know, like, what are the hints that you're too invested in company? And then also, like, I've got a full life outside of work, but sometimes, like, this time of the year, it's like everything feels exhausted. Exhausting. Mm. Is that yeah. the Say again. Mm. I don't think I heard that last, but... Um... Yeah, I think I mean, at this time of the year, um, yes, the exhaustion, how you deal with it. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> listen, I think the, the exhaustion this time of the year happens whether you are mm -hmm. over invested or not. Um, yeah. we, we also have it happening now where we just like, <laughs> you know, and like most people who work where I work, it like we really love being there, you know, people stay there and people want to be there, but it's just that it's, it's a lot, it's a lot, you know, and I also believe that we haven't really processed the whole COVID like story. None of us have actually processed that. Um, well, that's how I see it. I don't, you know, we kind of just had this trauma and then we were just like, okay, I have to go back to work now. And no, 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 no. And like, you know, mm -hmm. I don't think the average person maybe doesn't have access to it, but also hasn't thought of maybe going for some trauma counseling in a way or some therapy or some, you know, talking with a friend or a coach and just talking through everything. Um, so I feel like we are more tired than we would be just oh, due to a lot of that built up stuff. Um, Lalita, if I'm not answering your questions properly, you are most welcome to just pop me a message on LinkedIn and we can chat later. Um, there's, an, there's another Tim, question yes. in the chat, yeah. How can I avoid bringing work home despite the pressure? <laughs> yes? Um, and that's Tim. Yes. Tim asking that. Yeah. Okay. So bringing work home is a choice. And I know that sounds very simplistic and it's obviously very easy for me to say when it's you, you that's being affected. Um, ah, I see a couple of people are answering there. That's cool. Um, so it also depends largely on the type of organization you work for, the type of team you mm -hmm. have and the type of manager you have. So my main life-changing advice would be the next time you change jobs, spell it out beforehand and see how they are operating. Like EG, my manager does not even have our work chat app on his phone. So I know that when he's home, he's home. He doesn't expect me to do anything. And, you know, 
we know that if something comes up, we'll deal with it. But in general, there's no expectation for that. Um, like we're not expected to have teams on our phone or unless you know that you're off, often on the go and it just makes life easier for you, you know, during your normal work days. Um, so it's a choice so if it makes it convenient for you. But in a general sense, in terms of bringing work home, hmm, this brings me well, back to the COVID things as well. Because yeah. we were, we were oh, working at home and work were the same place, right? So I used to, I know it might sound a little bit crazy, but I used to literally mimic like a, a commute. So I would be like, cool, I'm going to walk three times in the garden up and or up and down the driveway five times. And then now I'm at work. And then at whatever time, then like I'm done. And then I go do it again. And then I'm at home now. And uh, it sounds a bit crazy, but those things actually work, little little triggers for you. Okay, especially if there's in the job description, expected to work overtime if needed. Ask why and how often. Yes, don't just smile and wave. 100%. Yeah, um, I, I can't stress enough how valuable it's been for me as well. The more specific you can be with what you, like, must have, what would be nice and what would be, like, an added bonus when you – either shift roles within the organization or change organizations or just to have a conversation with whoever your manager, team leader or coach or whatever it is and just say, look, this is the current situation. I don't feel that my life is the way I would like it to be. I feel like these three things might be, you know, not adding value to me. Um, can you help me shift this? Can you help me look at it differently? Whatever it might be. <laughs> See the little eyes there. Okay, any other thoughts, questions? Okay, I'm going to quickly just find that um, Trevor Noah link so you can find it. Um... While you're doing that, <clears throat> the second guy I ever worked for, he always said, when you come home, that big tree outside the gate, that's where you hang all the work-related problems and thoughts. I and, like and, that. And close the gate, walk in. Tomorrow morning when you walk out or drive out, then you can pick them all up again, but leave them there on the tree overnight. Yeah. Love that. Okay, the Trevor Noah... Link is in the chat if you missed the sound or anything. Um, I, I really loved it, how simple it is, and it's just so straightforward. And I'm not sure that I would like to be French, but maybe someone's French poodle, like I said. Um, and yeah, please do connect with me. I'm more than happy to chat further if you want some more. Um, I mean, I don't think I have all the answers, but I've been through some, <laughs> I say to people, I've done my jail time. So, you know, I've got, I've got some stories I can tell that might help you. Um, it seems like you've been around the block a couple of times. So I think um, <laughs> you, you've got lots of things that you could actually give us. So yeah, de definitely yeah. Thank you for nice. you up on that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's only a pleasure. You know, a general oh. comment, a general comment. I've worked for big business, I've consulted to big business, I own small business, I work with small business, and you know what? Doesn't matter the struggles and the trouble, but there seems to be a lighter, happier attitude in small business than in corporate. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's like it's, it, it's, it's, it's accepted that you need to be serious. I remember consulting to a bank, we won't mention names, and they say to you in the morning, uh, good morning, how are you? And I look at them and I say, very well. Well, that was like, huh? Where do you come <laughs> from? You're asking me. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like it's just a way of saying hello, but no one actually listens or cares to what you're saying. Um, yeah, the whole, really also, alternative was to say, "Do you really care?" <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I have been known to say things like that. Um, mm. Yeah, I found it to be the same. I don't know if anyone else wanted to add or ask something. Eh? You're welcome to switch to on your microphones. Very your similar sound. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, 
Don't I must say that. Seen. Sorry, that boss also said if 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 anybody buries him in Valcom, he's picking up his coffin and he's walking back to Pretoria. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? He doesn't want to be buried in Valcom. <laughs> okay, but was he in Valcom? Born there, if I remember oh. correctly. <laughs> I suppose it's a yearning for big city life. Um, yeah, the the big companies, many do seem to have um, sort of a status quo that. Okay, I'm also a bit of a strange person, so I would describe it as like far too serious, far too structured, far too like policy driven, procedure driven. Um, and I think the smaller companies tend to just have a bit more freedom around. Oh, something has happened. Ah, oh, let's write a policy to help you know, guide that decision-making in future and, and also not to drive your decision-making for let us curtail everyone's ability to do anything just because this one person had this, you know, moment of not knowing what to do. Um, I think it does give you more freedom in a smaller company. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I can share a little example. So what I love, well, one of the many things I love about Skynimo is that we are very much not uh, policy procedure driven. We create them as needed and try to keep them as lean and, and you know, as possible. And we're also not like super, super small. We're sort of like somewhere in the middle. But um, at some point we were asked to... Uh, Put forward if we want to do like a formal qualification in whichever year it was you know to kind of send the motivation and you know all the details and things and eventually our head of people ops just sent a message out to everyone and said look we've had such an overwhelming response that we're now not too sure how to make a fair decision about this so can you give us two weeks to write a policy and then that's what they did you know so um i think it makes a big difference when you and flip that around a little bit. Um, and I think the, the large companies can do it. I think they just not maybe sure how or think that it's not possible. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, this is totally random, but I've been reading this amazing book and I think the whole world should read it, especially people in like this kind of work life. Let me just find your link. It's called Prime to Perform. It is amazing. You must read it. Give you a link. Oops. Anyway, and then I'm going to stop rambling because I can just carry on and carry on. So let's not do that. <laughs> um, this book is really, really enlightening around how we structure like our goals and organizations, people's like remuneration packages, all these things to to be around like emotional pressures, economic pressure, and like whether someone is sort of inertia around like whether they would actually leave or not versus finding play and purpose and potential in your work, which is actually how, you know, people are truly motivated. So I found it really, really enlightening. Anywho, any last thoughts, questions, comments? Have you read the book, um, Cindy Norcott, um, How Does She Do It? It was also about work-life balance. Not yet. I can pop and, that on my um, list. And it's actually written in a very <clears throat> conversational way, uh, but nice. also funny, but very true. Um, yeah. Quite good. Quite good. Mm, that's cool. Yeah, listen, I've got such a long list of books I want to read. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like it'll never end. Yeah, the year is nearly ending with that. Two pages at a time. Hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> I think we can sit and chat for quite a while. There was quite. A, it's such a broad topic that you covered tonight. So thank you so much, Anna Linda. Um, it's a huge pleasure. I think some, yeah, I think sometimes we just need to take a step back and oof, breathe, right? Um, take charge yeah. and make the. Have those crucial conversations and mm. then make a decision, right? So yeah, absolutely. Just from our tools and techniques side, IBA, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm sure that was very insightful. I'll Huge definitely pleasure. post the 
post it onto our YouTube site for future reference. Um, yeah, and if there's nothing else from anyone from our team, I'm happy to say good night. Cool. Thank you very Thank much. You. And I'm sure I'll see you guys online somewhere. Mm -hmm.